You are listening to the Honor and Conquer podcast with me, Dion Sacconi Fraser. Yo, oh my goodness, we've made it. Episode 100. Episode 100. I can't believe it. I can't believe we've finally um, kind of made it. Uh, I didn't think when I first started this podcast, it all, you know, kind of drift into, uh, you know, doing as many episodes as, as I have done. But I'm glad I've kind of stuck it out and it's been super fun doing these podcasts, you know, making it to 100 all the way from number one. You know, the the idea of the podcast kind of came, I mean, if you're a long time listener of the show, you already know, you know, the origins of it. But for new listeners, how I started was I used a built, uh, an iPad that my father-in-law gave to me um, and I used the built-in microphone for that. And I just used the iPad to record the first, probably first 20 episodes, um, which is pretty crazy. <laughs> but, you know, we're finally here. And as you can see, it's a new surrounding. If you are watching on the YouTube video, it's uh, it's all new. We are official, officially living in Austin, Texas. It's craziness. It's absolute craziness. So we're here in our new apartment, and uh, it's a Saturday, so this is going to be recorded on, sorry, released on Monday, but yeah, we're here in here in Austin, Texas. It's uh, new surroundings, as you can see in the video, but I'm very stoked that we're here. Um, I'm still with Lululemon uh, here in Austin, which is awesome, and Megan works for On It. Uh, it's actually the t-shirt that I'm wearing, the t-shirt that I'm wearing, if you can see it on the YouTube video. But yeah, we got great, great place, a great apartment, uh, great jobs that we have, and we're just so fortunate to be, you know, in the place that we are, to be surrounded with the people and things that we have. So super stoked. Uh, but yeah, going back to the story of how I started the podcast, yeah, I just used the built-in microphone on the iPad, recorded the first couple twenty episodes with that, and then, you know, th- as along the way, I kind of chucked some more money into it and bought some things and all that kind of good stuff, and now we're here, you know, gathering, gathering guests, you know, asking, asking people to be on the show, I did a podcast with Alaska Tracy, uh, her show is called Biz Vision with Alaska Tracy, go check it out, it's on iTunes, go check it out, I help her edit her show, so uh, she asked me, you know, what have you, what have you gained from doing, you know, the podcast, like, what have you learned? And honestly, it's, I learned how to be a little bit more confident in terms of conversation. I turn, if I'm, if I don't know the person, then I automatically go in podcast mode and just uh, talk to them, ask them questions, normally how I would treat any podcast that I do. So that was really fun, uh, you know, being, uh, gaining like a new level of confidence, I suppose, that I didn't really think I would, I would gather, which is quite nice. Um, you know, our sponsors for the show, which is nice. Didn't we started the show with no sponsors because I, my ultimate goal, I didn't really think about monetizing the show. I wasn't really thinking about that at all. If anything, I was just thinking about, you know, getting people on the show and hanging out with new friends and, or making new friends. That was all I was worried about. So I feel very fortunate that I just make money off the, off the podcast. So, uh, you know, very, very happy with that. You know, starting the show in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania and being surrounded by people who wanted to help me out, which was great, you know, uh, being, um, oh my gosh, I'm drawing a blank with his name, fuck, the owner of Levity, babe, do you know the owner of Levity's name, fuck, huh, Dave, Dave. it's Dave, right, Dave what, Ray Patch, yeah, yeah, Dave Ray Patch, oh my gosh, just drew a name, just drew a blank on his name, but no, yeah, Dave was very helpful for, are you sure that's his name? I'm going to Facebook it right now, because I don't know. <laughs> okay. Mandarin Dave. Mandarin Dave. Dave. I, I'm, I feel like it's right. Dave, no. <laughs> no. Right, no. Dave, a double a double Ray Patch. 
just looking on on Facebook because I don't even know. This it just doesn't sound right. Okay, well, Facebook's not working because it's being a fucking dick. Um, but yeah, it sounds about right. Yeah, Dave Raypatch from Levity. Um, they he helped me out. He hooked me up with um, a couple of guests, and he always involved me in things that the, that they were doing. And again, you know, once I built um, a decent following in Pittsburgh, we moved. So um, we moved to Portland, Oregon. Um, sorry, going back to Pittsburgh. You know, met uh, John Malecki, Alexander Salerno, uh, Kylie Gamalier, uh, who have been on the show, Tyler Bourbon, um, you know, Garrett and, oh my gosh, I forgot his name too, uh, from uh, Stout Pittsburgh, uh, just everyone, Jonas, just, uh, you know, just all, that tall, that tall guy, <laughs> what was his name again? Mark? No, Dino, <laughs> Jugolo. I remember once I figured it out, Dino Ducolo, Cody, uh, Cody here being on the show, uh, Will being on the show, Will Holcomb, just a lot of awesome people that I've had on the show and just so, so thankful, Tom Dewar, um, not Kevin Cornell though, because <laughs> let's be honest, fuck Kevin Cornell, <laughs> if you don't know who Kevin Cornell is, just just look him up. He's so confused. He doesn't know what he wants to be: weightlifter or a car salesman, or a, or a, 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 a he's yeah he's a very without ripping on him too much because <laughs> that's not nice either. But he's a bit of a snake oil king, you know. He'll be motivational, and then he'll Google he'll Google he'll Google images of money and tell you that you know get after it. Yet he's not making that money. <laughs> it's <laughs> he's a moron. But you know, sometimes you yeah, have people on the show. What what's more fun is um when people who have been on the show and they're not very talkative. You know, they they've been on the show. You've you've talked with them. You know, without the microphone. But as soon as they get on the microphone, um, they are the shyest people in the world, but that re represents a, an awesome challenge, you know, because how, how can you tell their story if they're going to be shy? You know, how, how can you, to the listener, try and, you know, bring the best forward of them? So it, it does make it a little tough, but, you know, it's fun at the same time. Um, but yeah, Pittsburgh was nothing but great to me. It's funny because Pittsburgh gets this really bad rap of being such a gloomy city. When I moved to Portland and I said that I moved from Pittsburgh, people were like, oh, no, that's not a that's not a good city. It's like, have you been, motherfucker? Like, you don't know. Like, I always say Pittsburgh's been nothing but great to me. And I love Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh was my first experience of American culture. And it was great. I loved it. I loved my time in Pittsburgh. Wouldn't live there again, but I loved my time in Pittsburgh, for sure. Um, but yeah, then we moved to Portland. Portland was a different beast. Portland was an insanely different beast. I've never seen so many homeless people in my life. Never, never seen so many homeless people in my life. Um, but they they allow it and they have these things called tent cities where like they can kind of, uh, set up camp anywhere they want on an open area and they'll just stay there forever, you know, until people who buy the property kind of tell them to get lost um, but I've had awesome people on there explain to me why, um, the homeless population is so huge. Like, uh, Brent, who has been on this podcast multiple times working with the cheers program, you know, kind of helping, kind of helping help homeless people out or, uh, drunkards out, uh, Megan Case Bear, she's been on the show before and she worked with the same company and, you know, telling her, telling us her stories about you know drunkards and you know looking after those who do come into their care system um oh gosh i've had a lot of people uh, on the on this podcast i'm just kind of thinking about it now uh natalie bernacci from uh san diego is it san diego san diego san diego uh who owns a fit philosophy and now she she's a new mother she's a new mum, which is awesome uh, Amanda Ruler, who at the time was a uh, uh, running back for L for the Atlanta Steam in the LFL. Now I think she's a competitive weightlifter. No. Oh, it's one of those ones. Oh, now she's on the Canadian team. That's right. Representing Canada in the World 
championships of football or something like that, which is great. Um, Tony Blauer, who has been on the show twice, it's always good having that guy on this podcast. Um, he his mind is just so different in terms of uh, self defense and uh, his spear system that he's he's made through uh, through his mind and being affiliated with CrossFit as well, which is great. Um, but when we moved to Portland, what I didn't think about was how much it actually rained. Like there's there's rain, but then there's like rain, rain. Like it rained forever. I'm pretty sure there was a just one long week. Probably actually the first week that we moved there. We had maybe two good days and then a week long of just heavy, heavy fucking rain. And I'm a f- big fan of cold winter, like cold weather, sorry. I love winter. When winter comes around, I love it. When, uh, winter in Pittsburgh, I loved it. When people were complaining about the snow, I was loving it. I loved it so, so much. Um... But in Portland, it's just, a, that's different. And then when we moved to Portland, people were saying, oh, you'll never get snow there. Your father, my father-in-law said, oh, you'll never get snow. I specifically remember that. And what happened a couple of weeks later? We got fucking snow. <laughs> we got snow twice. We got snow twice. The The first, uh, we were there for Christmas, so we got snow. We didn't get snow on Christmas Day, which was nice. Um, not nice for Megan though. Megan loves white Christmases. Typical, typical racism. Um, but yeah, the next, the next Christmas, um, we got heavy, heavy snow that day too. Fuck man. That was a gnarly, that was gnarly. I was loving it though. Because we would take our, our frying pan, not frying pan, like our, our baking pan out and like find a steep as hell and then we'd just fucking fly down it. It was a great time. I loved it. I loved that when snow was heavily coming, people just fucking freaked out. <laughs> it was great because people stayed inside. So you could just walk on the road and just fucking do whatever you wanted. I was loving it. Ollie was loving it too. It made taking Ollie for a walk so much more fun <laughs> because she just wanted to eat all the snow. Just eat all of it because she's a little shit like that. Uh, but no, I had, uh, when we moved the podcast to Portland, more opportunities came. You know, we, I uh, I started running the podcast out of WeWork and then quickly realized that that was a worst idea ever. Um, <laughs> not that not that WeWork was bad. It was just, it didn't make sense for, for me personally. Um, it, it just, it felt weird. I, I loved working there, don't get me wrong, but it just... I don't know. I couldn't afford it. That was definitely one thing. I couldn't. Fo- I couldn't afford it, and I thought being amongst you know great creators and creators of all these kind of things and you know new apps, new projects, other podcasters. I thought it would be great for me to meet other people like that, but it wasn't. <laughs> I I feel like I tried. I guess I didn't try hard enough, but that's okay. It was, uh, it was one of those things where I'd rather get, you know, people from uh, uh, interesting backgrounds than just get people who would come on the show to talk about their app because I just didn't want to talk about that. I could just see it happening. I, d- I just didn't want to do it. I guess that's me not being a team player. But I don't know. Fuck the world. It's my podcast. I do what I want. <laughs> but um, And then I started and then I got a new setup. I got a completely new setup. I got what I'm using now. This uh, for those of you on YouTube who can see it. This is what I use now. It's a Zoom H4n. It's uh, really great for portable. Um, if you guys are wondering, by the way, who are watching this on YouTube, why our couch is just covered in sheets and blankets is because our dog Ollie sheds like a motherfucker. She sheds her hair so fucking much, and it's white. So, and we've got a dark blue, we've got a navy blue couch. So you can see every little strand of hair on our couch. So we're trying to keep it as like covered up as possible. So that's, for those of you who are watching on YouTube, that's why we've got some bullshit blankets going on right now, like mismatch. And I like these blankets though. I like this one. This one is definitely one of my favorite ones. It's, uh, we got it. We actually got it in Albuquerque, the worst p- 
place in the world. Do you want to? Okay, let's let's talk about that. Let's talk about our journey from Portland, Oregon to Austin, Texas. So it was a seven day trip, seven long trip day. It didn't feel. Uh, it didn't feel short like I was thinking it was going to. It felt quite long. Um, <clears throat> but <laughs> Megan just opened up some food and Ollie just was like, what the fuck? I want to eat some. Now she's going to go over. But we started our day in Salt Lake City. A uh, 10 hour drive to Salt Lake City. That blew. I haven't done a 10 hour drive in a long time. In a year, I'd say. Got to Salt Lake City, found out there was a $75 charge uh, for just having Ollie, which we didn't know about until we got there, which was 9 o'clock at night. 10.30, Megan just said. Uh, so we ha- obviously had no other choice but to pay it. Um, but then, you know, uh, but then uh, Hyatt actually uh, refunded us, which was nice. But at the time, we were fucking furious. I wasn't that mad. Megan was pissed off. I wasn't like, well, well, you should have read the fine print. (laughs) Megan was like, yeah, I know. Well, I told you, you should have went to the Hyatt website and looked at the frequently asked questions about pets. See, that's what makes sense to me, but she didn't do that. She booked it through a third party, but that doesn't matter. Uh, We got to Salt Lake City, found out we had to pay 75 bucks. Then I finally realized why a guy kept his dogs in his car. (laughs) because <laughs> he which is so fucked up anyway i uh, got into our hotel uh service was shit um you know whatever hyatt you you want to be a, a high-end hotel then treat us high-end you motherfuckers um but the hotel was great bed was so so this is my rating and i give that hyatt place a mm, I'll go, f- I'm going to say 5 out of 10, just to be in the middle. Megan says what? 3 out of 5. Three out of five. Oh, okay, you said 5. Okay. Yeah, 3 out of 5. That's 3-star hotel for us. Um, and then we were back on the road, and then we went to Albuquerque, New Mexico. And let me tell you, just the, tr- the trip alone, getting into Albuquerque, is fucking barren. It's very hilly, and by the way, I was ch- uh, carrying a trailer with me, so and I do all the driving, so having to drive with that fucking heavy ass trailer on the back, and I was sick, <laughs> so that sucked too. But it made the trip. We flew through gas like it was no one's business. Oh my gosh, we probably spent over a uh, near two hundred. Has to be at least near two hundred. Yeah, three? Megan thinks 300. Of course she thinks 300. Because <laughs> she rounds up to the nearest 50. No, you spend about $100 a day at least. Yeah. $100 a day, you're dreaming. It was, it was 40 bucks. Uh, yeah, good point. Yeah. 300. Probably a little bit more than 300 then. Yeah. Fuck. We spent more than 300 bucks on gas. <laughs> <laughs> especially around the Albuquerque region um, because it was just so hilly. And when we got into, like, get, got closer to Albuquerque, it was uh, it was quite bumpy. It was quite bumpy. So we had to, like, take our time, and we went past some Indian reservations. Is that correct? And that was some next-level, like, bullshit that we saw. Like... It was a gl- it was a step above a um a shipping container step above a shipping container for houses they all looked the same land was so like just empty like the nearest town was fucking ages away and when we were going through there I was like I'm never gonna complain about anything ever again <laughs> like just going through it, I was just so amazed by how their living situation was. And then we got into Albuquerque. <clears throat> Albuquerque was nice. The Hyatt place, they were, you know, they were very, very nice to us. Um, everyone was so friendly. I had my very first, um, what you call it, uh, fry bread. That was delicious. I want one of those again. I had honey on it. 
And then uh, Megan posted a video of me eating it. And then she said that it made her jealous that I could eat it. And then my friend Kylie Gamalia said it's only a matter of, a matter of time before I get fat or something. And I'm like, fuck you, bro. I'm going to eat the shit out of this fry bread. I would, I would have probably eaten five of those in one sitting. Easy. That fry bread was so legit. Um, yeah, and then did that. We went out to a winery. I was fucking dying. I was so sick. I was... I had a I had a mad sinus infection, so my snot smelt so bad. My mucus in my nose, it was just like neon green, and it smelt like, uh, like a dead body. It smelt like a dead body. It smelt like burning flesh in my face, and it was not good. Couldn't get over it actually until I got to until I got to Austin. As and as soon as I got to Austin, I went to go um, to a minute clinic. Straight away, dumped my bags and we went to uh, to a minute clinic and got antibiotics. But yeah, anyway, at Albuquerque, yeah, that was happening. And then we kind of got hungry. We were like, let's go get a salad from McDonald's. Because McDonald's was close by and you consider McDonald's fast food. So, you know, and their salads are prepackaged. So you just go up, I want a salad, sweet, prepackaged salad, easy. We'll get the fuck out of the shithole McDonald's. We get there. And we ordered two salads and a drink. So we realized, like, okay, cool, it's going to da 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 And they started panicking because I was kind of looking behind the counter going, they're kind of, they keep saying salad. I'm hearing salad a lot back there, you know. I And, and uh, I'm just like salad, something, 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 salad, something, 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 salad. And they're speaking Spanish to each other. And we're like, I don't know what's going on. And then I knew something was up. When someone who ordered after us got their food first. I'm like, okay, something's really going on. Megan went up. No, someone came to us and said, oh, we don't have any salad. And then they said that the manager who has the key to the freezer or fridge isn't here. So we have to call the... I'm like, why is the key with the manager who's not working, you dummies? Like, uh, I remember when mum used to work at McDonald's. McDonald's was legit back then. An actual place where families go to like... Anyone, any family. But here in America, like, McDonald's is completely something different. That's where scumbags hang out. That's where, like, the shit of the earth kind of go. And if you, have a, if you have to get a job there, like, get your job, make your money, you know, save up for college or, you know, get your first job. McDonald's is always, like, your first job. Any takeaway place is your first job. But if you're a human, that's where, the, that's where scumbags go. That's where... That's where you want... You wouldn't be surprised if you get, like, diarrhea, you know? When you're sliding into third and you feel a juicy turd, diarrhea. <laughs> but that's where you go when you're comfortable with knowing that you could possibly leave there with a disease. You have to be okay with that, I reckon. But, yeah, we get out. Then the guy came over to us and said, we don't have salad. Okay, cool. Refund the money back onto our card and we can get the fuck out of this shithole. So we did. We, we got the money refunded back onto our card. And we got the fuck out of there. We went to Waffle House. Enjoyed a very nice dinner. Uh, with a lady who just could not stop talking about how shit her life is. Which was great. I loved that. Enjoying my T-bone steak while listening to her. Loved that. And then it came, came time to pay. And I had my wallet. Megan looked for her wallet in her bag. Oh. What? It's, no, wallet's not in her bag. That's interesting. That's strange. But I'm not I'm I'm used to this. I'm used to Megan kind of just leaving her shit around. So I said, I'm gonna but this in this instant, it made me a little like I got a big like pit in my stomach. Cause this one didn't feel right. You know, when you when you say, I don't know where my wallet is, most of the time I'm like, ah, okay, whatever. But this one was like, we're in a new town. That doesn't make sense to me. That's not at home, so it has to be on you. So I, I ran to the car to look for it. Couldn't find it. Like, that's odd because Megan had her wallet with her. We searched the car, couldn't find it. So we got in the car, drove right back to McDonald's to ask for help. Back, We drove back to the shithole, which we couldn't get, couldn't wait to get out of. By the way, the security guard was stupid. The security guard had his, this is how stupid he was. 
He has his beard tied up in a ponytail. That's all you need to know. That's all you need to know. If you're tying up your beard in a ponytail, don't. <laughs> Just don't do it. Or shave it. Or shave it off. Just don't do it. You know? It goes for most people who, like, look after their beard. I get the beard oil. I totally get it. But if you're trimming it and blow-drying it and, like, combing it. Quint. Quint, yeah, you know who you are. Don't do that. Just don't grow a beard anymore. <laughs> don't grow a beard. Trim it to a length where you're happy with not doing that. Anyway, we drove back to McDonald's. Megan went inside while I stayed in the car to... Uh, look for her wallet because just in case it may have slipped by under uh, you know between the seats or underneath the chair or somehow made its way back to you know the the back of the car and Megan goes in and there's the dumb ass manager playing with a fidget spinner those dumb ass fidget spinners or whatever you call them and Megan asked you know lady my wallet's been stolen long you know this is a long story short super short my wallet's been stolen can we please, like, has anyone handed it in? And dumbass managers playing with their fidget spinner going, uh, we can, I, I'm not, I can't, again, with the key situation, I don't have the key to get into the office to look at the security cameras, but she'll, you know, she'll look for, for you. So she goes, and then she can't, and then she comes back, doesn't even talk to Megan, kind of starts fluffing with, you know, the takeaway bags and napkins and starts probably fidgeting with herself. And then Megan has to ask, a lady comes up to Megan and says, have you been looked after? Oh, uh, yeah, your dumbass manager is trying to look for me, but apparently she's too busy, like, fucking around, doing nothing, working by the hour, being a manager, and working off her looks. So they weren't a help. We left. And then we realized that her shit has been stolen. We realized pretty quick that uh, her bag was pit-pocketed. And we look, we, you know, when we got back to the hotel, I'm going around all the people who are around us, and I realized that there was um, a lady who was next to us, and I don't think it was the lady, actually. I think it was the African-American man that was standing behind us. The lady? The lady who was next to us was peeking hard, but that guy that was behind us was, like, stupid close to us thinking back now and I you know in my head I'm like oh you know we I mean how like why so I walked away I sat back down and I didn't notice anything too fidgety going on um and then yeah right then and there we at like 10 o'clock at night Megan was online just online with Capital One by the way Capital One best bank in the world they helped us out so much they, uh, you know, they cancelled everything for Megan, got a card sent out overnight to our new apartment here in Austin, Texas. Um, helped us out immensely. So, so thankful for them. On the other hand, PNC, shit bank, and we're still waiting for a card from them. Maybe we should follow up with that, by the way, babe. Oh, 100%. Can't wait. Yeah. Um... PNC were not helpful in cancelling our cards and getting us a new one. Not helpful at all. The worst. So we got that. Uh, her passport was stolen as well, along with her social security number. So um, we had to report that to the Albuquerque police. Um, and I posted all of this on face uh, on my Instagram story. And then everyone kind of said, yeah, Albuquerque is shit. Um, they're known. They're like the number one in America for fifth. I didn't know any of that stuff. Maybe it's my fault for being like I didn't research or anything like that. But then again, I'm not really thinking about who's going to steal my shit. So, which it was a bummer. That put a massive downer on that. Not the trip, but just put a massive downer on that, like that night. Um, so I woke up and because we spent a day in Albuquerque, we couldn't wait to get out of there. And we had our trailer parked up at the back. You know, we, we took up two parking spots. So it would be easy for uh, me to, uh, me, uh, Megan and I actually, sorry, to, you know, hitch trailer back up. So we get out to the car, ready to go. We've packed everything, just, pretty, just waiting get, to get the fuck out of here. Some dumbass from Texas parks right next to our trailer, which means we can't get the trailer out 
to hitch it up to our car. So I spat on that car. I spat all over it with my fucking mucus that I had my sinus infection. I spat on it. What, looking back now, I should have spat on the handle. I should have spat on the handle so that motherfucker could have got the disease I had. The disease from 28 days later. Turned him into a fucking zombie monkey. <laughs> um, but I, I was so close to kicking it. I was so close to kicking in that door because I was so angry. Um, but Megan was the, you know, the angel on my left shoulder or my right shoulder. She said, don't do that. But she, we did leave a fucking nasty letter. Megan wrote it, a, a nasty letter. Um, I'm not going to explain what the letter said. <laughs> she just stopped to look at me. I'm, I'm not explaining it. But, yeah, so we got over that. I actually have the entire video <laughs> of us struggling with it. I'll post it up somewhere, I suppose. So we got that out of there. And that was a downer on the trip. But then we got to Dallas, Texas, and we and we hung out with Renee Lee and... No, sorry. Renee Hart and Lee Hart. Um, I've always thought Hart is such an awesome name, last name. Um, I've loved Hart as a last name. I think it's because um, Brett Hart is my... Um, where you going? Oh. Mm. Megan's going to go sandpaper the fucking bamboo structures that we got <coughs> that we got from Ross but um yeah we got to Dallas Texas hung out with Renee and Lee and that was great I loved it uh hung out with the two dogs my favorite new dogs apart from Ollie um Cosmo and Bella which was awesome I hung out in Dallas for a solid day went to the um George W. Bush Museum now, I'm not really into, I'm, I'm not really, you know, in tune with politics. I don't know what, you know, the ins and outs of it. But that museum was really, really amazing. I loved learning more about, you know, George W. Bush's terms uh, while in office. And we went to a replica of the White House, which was really awesome. Uh, saw the red, the red button, you know, that tells people to, you know, send out the nukes or whatever it does, which is really fun. Learned so much about uh, you know, the things that he had to go through. And a lot of people, it's crazy because a lot of people gave George W. Bush a really bad rap. But when you think about it in the two terms that he did, he got he got a pretty shit hand. He got, he got you know, he's trying to make any president, I suppose. Well, I mean, Donald Trump being president, I still look at that as like a fucking, <laughs> like a, <laughs> as a fucking laughable thing. The TV personality is your president. <laughs> I just have to laugh because it's like he's got no business in the White House. <laughs> oh man, you Americans are fucking crazy. You don't vote yet. You you watch. You're happy to watch football. You'll watch the halftime show of a, of the Super Bowl. You know, but you won't vote for your president. It's just so fucking funny to me. Oh. Man, thank fuck I'm not a citizen. I'm just a resident. I'm still a New Zealand citizen, which is awesome. I love it. I'm not going to renounce my citizenship to New Zealand. Never. New Zealand's always my home. Um, but yeah, went to the George W. Bush Museum. That was great. Loved it. Loved it. And I was sick as balls. I wasn't on medication, so I had to um, pound back lots and lots and lots of water. Um and yeah, that was the day. Had an amazing barbecue feast at I think it was Longhorn Barbecue in Dallas, Texas, which was great. Loved it. And then we took in our last stop was Austin, Texas. Seeing the apartment for the first time was fucking buzzy. It was awesome. So yeah, now we're here, still doing the podcast episode mother flipping 100 i've had so many amazing opportunities through this damn podcast um i'm just trying to think of some uh, you know not springs in portland oregon being a brand ambassador for those guys uh helping my friend Callan stein with his stay curious podcast helping helping lynn lee and megan with the society nine podcast and helping alaska tracy with her biz vision podcast it's and helping others create their own, uh, formulating what their podcasts want to be. So I'm just so thankful 
it's, it's crazy what this podcast has given me and I didn't even think that it could possibly happen. Never in my wildest dreams did I ever think that I was going to do this. Like, not just the podcast, but the things outside of the podcast. I didn't, I did not think I was going to, uh, going to do this. So I was very, I'm very, very happy and I'm very stoked that this show can be, um, can be universal. I can take it anywhere. I can take it anywhere that I want, you know? Okay. But before we close this out, I just want to say thank you very much to every single mother flipping person who has downloaded a podcast, who has subscribed to a podcast, who has been on the journey since day one, or who is very new to the podcast. I appreciate you all for being on this fucking crazy journey of podcasting that is mine, that is the Honor and Conquer podcast. I truly, truly appreciate it. I, um, man, know that because I make money from this, uh, like the show has weirdly enough become monetized, this show will always be free. The show, I mean, if you want to count Patreon, if you want to get it earlier, you can pay a little bit of money. But there's always going to be a show on Monday at 6 o'clock my time. Uh, it's always going to be free. I'm never going to charge you to unlock an episode on a Monday. I'm never going to do that. The show's always free. This video is always going to be free uh, that I started doing. Um, but... Just know that I truly appreciate you listening to this podcast. I truly appreciate you being on this fucking journey with me. And now being here in the ATX in the Austin, Texas region, I am i can't wait for what this new year in a new location brings for us. Um, but yeah, before we close it out though, I'm going to give you the top five podcasts so far. Okay? We'll start with number five. No, sorry. Uh, we'll start with, yeah, we'll start with number five, okay? Nate Quarry. Nate Quarry, uh, oh, I don't even have the episode numbers. Ah, that's too fucking funny, bro. Um, actually, let's do this real quick. Let's do this. Let's do this real quick. This will, this won't take too long. What I'm going to do is, um, <clears throat> I got the names, but I don't have the fucking, uh, the fucking numbers to them. So I'm gonna have to look it up. Gonna do the stuff. Gonna do all the things. That's another thing being here in Austin, Texas. I'm gonna have to get used to uh, people listening to country music because I'm not the biggest country music fan. I like the band Perry. I like them. Uh, who else do I like? That's about it. I like I like that. I, I like that. The band Perry. Um, come on iTunes. You damn thick. I love when computers go slow. Oh, we watched this cool movie last night called Hidden Figures. And they're uh, a group of African-American women who are computers, who are basically human computers. Back before IBMs were even a thing. Um, so it was just interesting to watch. Um... But their brains would work so smart, so quick, so smart. It would take a while for them to, you know, figure out how to do certain things. But they're just so, so smart. Okay, here we go. This computer's going slow, baby. Yeah. Oh, shit. If you can see what's going on with my computer screen. It's fucking up real bad. I'm going to... Have to cancel that list. Little there. Do I want to save it? No, I don't. <clears throat> this is my singing voice. My country singing voice. <sighs> Fuck. This is really isn't working. Might have to control all the... Fuck. <laughs> Give me a second, team. Whoa. That wasn't a good voice. That wasn't a good noise, was it? I have the control alt delete. Sorry guys, this isn't this isn't part of the plan. I had my notes all fucking written out. 
Come on. I had my notes all written out and I was so, I was ready to go. But this, ah, come on, man. Fuck. In task. Go. Thank you. Okay, let's, let's try it again. Let's, let's try it again. Fuck. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Double click. Um, if this doesn't work, then fuck it. You don't have to know the numbers. Um, uh, let's actually move on to the, the, yeah. If you're wanting to start a podcast out there and, uh, and you don't know where to start or if you don't know where to begin, this is literally what I told myself. Like coming from like punk rock background and playing punk rock bands and playing in metal bands, a DIY culture, do it yourself culture is always number one. Like if there's something that you want to do, make it happen. It doesn't matter how, just do it. Magazines, you know, when people would make zines, they drew all the pictures in the magazine, photocopied it. Doesn't matter about fucking color. Uh, put all the phone, put all the paper together, and staple them. That's your zine. That's your magazine. You know, you can be as uh, you can be as creative or as something as you want, but being DIY, being in that DIY culture, just make that fucking shit happen. So I try to keep that uh, perspective going into, uh, going into, wow, <laughs> um, going into the podcasting world. So the, the, the best advice I can give you, be simple. Just keep your show uh, simplistic. Don't worry about a fucking fancy intro. Don't worry about any of that shit, shit. Anything that you have to require money, like lots of money to put into. Like with my intro, I only started using that intro like fucking five episodes ago. Like really? Like I didn't give a fuck about an intro. My intro, if you've been with me for a long time, has always been, uh, welcome to the Honor and Conquer podcast. This podcast episode is brought to you by Read the Sponsor Read. That's literally my intro. But for the sake of sounding a little bit more professional, a little bit more put together, I had to make that shit work, you know? Um, so keep it simple. Unless you get a little bit of income, don't worry about what anyone else, when any other podcast is doing, because that podcast is not yours, dummy. Your podcast is not theirs. They probably have a little bit more money than you. So just focus on content. And I, actually, when I was watching a lot of Casey Neistat... <clears throat> Casey needs that uh, vlogs. He always said, um, you know, quality over quantity. You know, what is the quality of the content? Because the quality of the content will outshine the 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 um, quality of the content. Is that what I said? Content over quality. No, the content has to be quality. And whatever you shoot it on, or whatever you record it on, it doesn't fucking matter. The content has to be good. So. That's my advice. Like the the most expensive thing that I actually run is probably this, like this H four N. The Zoom H four N costs me fucking hundred and hundred and thirty dollars. It's the most expensive shit that I got for the show. You know the cord this this particular cord that I'm using today cost me ten bucks. This microphone that I'm using right now twenty bucks. This uh, foam ball that I've got going on here that was six bucks for a pack of ten. You know, these headphones were 10 bucks. So, I mean, the I, oh shit, the GoPro that I'm using, that's not even mine. <laughs> that's actually my old jobs. Fuck, I took it. I forgot. Oh shit, that's not mine. You know, the tripod that I'm using right now, 15 bucks. The cord that I've got going into the iPod, uh, the, the GoPro, sorry. Did I say iPad? iPod? Yeah, the GoPro, sorry. The GoPro, the cord going into the GoPro to charge it to make sure it doesn't die on me. That was six bucks, I think. Six or ten bucks. So it can be inexpensive. You can make quality uh, content in a very inexpensive way. You just have to really research it. You have to spend hours on Google to see like uh, cheap ways. Just simply Google type, uh, type in Google, cheap ways for podcasting. And then find what works and then put it on Amazon. If it's too expensive, if it's outside the realm of your, you know, your budget, sweet. Don't do it then. Find another way. 
Like there's there's always a way around something. You know what I mean? Um, and be forward if you want to get guests. If you want to get guests on the show, then fucking ask them. You know, don't make up the stories in your head. Just get on the email, get on the text machine, get on the phone, and just ask the person who you want. You know, if they say no, tough shit. No, it's all good. There's nothing personal against you. It's just a no. They don't want to do it. All good. Move on. Find another person. Um, and think less, do more. <laughs> Going on, be simplistic. You know, we always get, we always create these stories in our fucking head. They're like, oh, this person may not want to do it. Oh, this this show is, uh, you know, it's not like so and so's. Who gives a fuck? Your show is your show, and there's always going to be someone out there who's going to wish that their show sounded like yours. So just focus on you, okay? Those are real easy rules to stand by. Okay, top five podcasts so far have been downloaded, have been streamed, have been five-starred, whatever it is. The five, the top five podcasts so far. Okay, we'll start with, we'll start with um, number five. That's what we'll do, okay? We'll start with number five. We'll start with number five. We'll start with number five. Okay. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, number five on the most popular, downloaded, streamed podcasts so far. Number five, episode 72 with Justin Hickox. That's right. And you know what's funny about that episode? It got cut because I, I guess I fucked up. <laughs> I guess I fucked up with um, one of my things. So uh, I only got half of that episode. But who Justin Hickox is, is, um, is a wellness coach. He's a health coach. He's better known as a tough love coach on his, um, you know, on his, on his like fitness Facebook page. We talk about, you know, fitness with him and the transition about going into fitness and what made him fall in love with fitness and all that good stuff, all right? So episode 72 with Justin Hickox. Number four on the most popular downloaded or streamed episode uh, so far on the Honor and Conquer podcast is Scott Pancheck, Saxon Pancheck, Spencer Pancheck, and Kristen, uh, I guess Panchik now, they're married, yeah, that's right, unless she kept her last name, um, the Panchik brothers, out of uh, Mentor, Ohio, uh, they work out and own, as a, as a team, as a family, as a unit, uh, CrossFit Mentality, um, this was probably a big, actually a backstory behind it, I won't even tell you what we talked about, but backstory on this podcast, on this episode specifically, was the first time I actually reached out to a big name, I emailed them and I said, look, I want you on my podcast, I'll travel out to you to do this damn show, and knowing, not knowing that I wasn't going to travel, I actually no, I, I knew I could, I knew I wanted to do it, um, but what were the odds, you know, it's like, oh, I'm a small time podcast, who gives a fuck, going back to think, let's do more, right, so he said, yeah, let's do it, I couldn't believe it, I said, holy shit, we've got a date, we've got a time, oh my god, we're gonna do it, games athlete, you know, he's been on ESPN, his brothers, they're just a, an army of fucking killers, his, his wife, just, the, he, she, she is the herder of the craziness that goes on, she keeps the boys in line, you know, there's always a strong woman behind a strong man, or in this case, a strong team, and she keeps those boys in line, you know, looks after their aches and pains, looks after their bruised egos, <laughs> but we drove, actually, Brooks the Fury and I, so my car broke down, my car broke the fuck down, the uh, Subaru Forester, fucking shit the bed, you know, cacked it, so I said, to, I said to Brooks, bro, I need a car to get out to Mentor to do this podcast because this podcast is going to be a fucking big deal for me. And he and he said, uh, yeah, can I come? And I'm like, sweet, yeah, fuck yeah, you can come. This is going to be a fun-ass trip now. This turned into a road trip. And uh, yeah, that was it. We made the road trip over. We got we did the show. It was fucking awesome. Had, the, had a blast. I was so stoked that Brooks could do it with me because I was kind of nervous and I needed a friend there with me. So, uh, yeah, 
that was episode that was the most that was the fourth most downloaded and streamed podcast of all time of all time number three most popular podcast tony blower tony blower of the spear system blair tech uh, blower tactical systems um again this was another big deal for me because i've never had a guest of this caliber on the show so knowledgeable about everything uh, everything to do with self-defense martial arts has been on the ultimate fighter to help uh, coach k from csa uh, and his fighters he's done so many seminars around the world and he took time out of his day to be on the podcast with me you know to get his backstory or not his backstory but his um philosophy on fighting really truly meant the world to me Number two, the most downloaded or streamed podcast so far at episode 100 is actually the last episode we did, episode 99 with Much Mayhem of Wheels of Justice. Um, She has quite a cult following, actually. I didn't realize that. (laughs) I didn't realize that until I posted it. And a lot of people messaged me saying, you know, so stoked that Much is on, um, knowing some more about Much Mayhem. Um, you know, she's a, she's a superstar pizza tosser. She's a world traveler. She's a coach. She's a, you know, she's an athlete. She's a Red Bull athlete, which is even cooler. Um, but just so stoked to have her on, you know, and to have her as number two best podcast in the universe. And number one, it was the very first episode that we did with Tony Blower, episode 61. That was the top, that's the number one downloaded or streamed podcast, no shit. This one was actually the first, because we did two episodes with Tony Blau, and the first one was my favorite, because I did it at WeWork, which I mentioned before, so that it was quiet, and the questions were pretty quality. The second time I did it, the, the second time we did it, the internet went down, this is a backstory bef- behind episode uh, 84, which was the third most downloaded podcast, backstory, our internet was down, so we I had to do this podcast at a coffee store at a Starbucks, and it was actually, um, it was actually, there's a bug on there, it was actually snowing, so everything was closed, so I couldn't go to a uh, just any old coffee house. I knew that Starbucks was open, so I had to go there, and I said to myself, everything's closed, who's going to be out? Honestly, it's going to be dead, it's going to be quiet. Went in, it was fucking packed. Starbucks was packed. And I said, I can't pull this podcast off. I guarantee I'm not going to pull it off. And I didn't. <laughs> I didn't. I, I got it done, don't get me wrong. But the audio quality was just so fucking shite. And I felt so bad for Tony. I was very embarrassed after that show because it didn't show the level of professionalism and how serious I take this podcast. It didn't, it didn't, I felt like it didn't come across like that to Tony and after that, I apologized to Tony saying, you know, I'm so sorry that the audio was shit. I apologize. And he was so nice about it. You know, he was a very cool guy. But I think you're always your worst critic. Um, you know, I treat this podcast, although I, I swear and everything and bullshit on the show, I treat this show very, very seriously. Uh, if I can't get it done, I get fucking angry. I get pissed off if I can't make it my own personal deadlines. Um, so... I was just so annoyed with myself that I kind of, you know, l- shat the bucket, you know, and, uh, but I'm glad I got it done. I'm glad I got it done. I'm just so stoked. And I'm just so stoked that episode 61, the very first episode, was number one. Number flipping one. Uh, and my f- uh, top three favorite guests that I've had on the show, this one was going to be a little biased, uh, we'll start with number three. Um, it's tough because. Any show that I have my friends on, it's going to be a classic show. I love it. But number three of my favorite that I actually don't think, uh, you know, this one's an underdog of them all, is actually, uh, sorry, just fucking snotted everywhere, <clears throat> was it is, uh, episode 46 with Frank Sutton. That episode lasted three hours. Still the longest podcast that I've ever done. No one's even come close to touching it. <laughs> um, yeah, two hours and 53 minutes long. That's how long that show was. 
But it was one of my favorites because he really opened up. He really opened up. We forgot about time. We just talked, you know, about his story. His backstory is cool. He, 40 days on the open road traveling from Colorado to, I think it was, I think it was Oregon. Uh, and he biked it. He actually biked it. And the cool thing about him is that he didn't actually train for anything. He just was like, I'll buy a bike and I'll just do the damn thing. And that was it. So I wanted to know more about him. So yeah, Frank Sutton episode 46 was great. I loved it. Um, another favorite of mine. Oh man, what was another favorite of mine? I've done so many. Oh gosh, yeah, another favorite one of mine. <clears throat> yeah. Another one would be... Um, Fucking, oh, jeez, number two, what would be number two, I've done, oh, man, gosh, this is tough, this is so tough, number two, I'm just gonna whisper it, oh, fuck it, Kellen Stein, you win by default, brother, <laughs> Kellen Stein, him and I became, I want to say, I want to say best friends, he's one of my best mates, him and I became best mates through uh, through Lou Lemon. Uh, I worked I worked with his girlfriend uh, Sarah Bates in Portland, Oregon, and we just bonded over the same shit. You know, he wanted to start his podcast, so I st I helped him out with it and helped him with any other questions that he had. Sorry, I probably look so loungy right now. <laughs> you people watching on YouTube, um, but I helped him out, and we we became really close, you know. We started talking about, you know, just different shit and goals and all that kind of stuff, and we really bonded. And uh, out of everyone in Portland, I probably I miss that cat the most, you know. Um, yeah, he's really, really is a cool dude. Um, I'm stoked to he possibly could be coming out to Austin, Texas, at the end of July or August. So, yeah, man. I mean, yeah, call it a fucking man crush or whatever, or fucking man love. Just it was just a mate, you know. He's a mate. One of the boys. And number one, Tyler Bourbon. I always talk about this podcast with anyone that I talk to about. Tyler Bourbon, uh, that was episode 17. And we talked about his um, his, actually, his his struggles with, uh, you know, he had an eating disorder in, in college. Um, you know, we talk about the ideals of being a handsome man, you know, being, you know, what the stereotypical image of a man and what they're meant to look like and how they meant to perform as an athlete, um, and, uh, all that kind of bad stuff, you know, and Tyler really opened up, and, you know, he's a, he's one of the boys, you know, he's a close friend of mine, and I'm just so stoked that Tyler even came to me, and he said, I want to be in a show to talk about this shit, and I was like, you know what, you're one of the boys, you're one of my good mates, we'll fucking talk about it, let's do it, <clears throat> so I was so stoked to have him on, and very grateful, and I'm, and I'm grateful, honestly, the fact that I, they're just my favorite, my top three favorites, uh, shows that I've done, but honestly, I appreciate everyone that's been on the show, I appreciate everyone who's taken the time out of their day to uh, be on the show, to talk to me about, you know, just about anything, you know, and we've done a hundred of these damn fucking things, and I hope to do another hundred more, so, you know, I'm just so thankful and th so uh, appreciative of everyone who's been on the show, and you know, it's it's just it's just bonkers, you know. But uh, I guess we'll leave it there. Yeah, man, it must be near an hour or something. I said to Megan before he, I jumped on, I was like, ah, oh, this podcast won't be longer than thirty or forty minutes. <laughs> but um, but yeah. Anyway, I th thank you so much, everyone, for you know just hanging in there with me and. Uh, I really, really appreciate it, uh, and listening to the show, whatever you're doing, working out, going to work, or, you know, just fucking mucking around the house, and, you know, you, you want to listen to one of these shows, so, um, it does mean the world to me, so I appreciate it, I appreciate you so much, okay, okay, that's the end, what else do you want from me, motherfuckers, that's it, we're done, oh, oh, you, you want something else, you want, you want a little something, something? Don't worry about it. I got something coming, boys. Uh, boys and girls. We're going to talk like this as we uh, finish the episode. Uh, you, you want something else? You want a little something, something? Well, there's something coming. Coming everywhere.